Good morning, St. Paul's, and welcome to worship on this very first Sunday in January 2021, and Happy New Year to everybody. We're so grateful that you were worshiping with us this morning. If this is the first time you've worshiped with us, or if you're visiting with us, we hope that you find this to be a place where you can find true meaning in your search for God and for nearness in Christ. This is a great community where we believe that we embrace everyone and everyone has a purpose and a place here. Today is a very special day in the life of St. Paul's. It is our second annual Star Words Day. Star Words is, and by that I mean Star Words, not the movie Star Wars. Star Words where we celebrate the fact that it was the light of a star that brought the wise men to find Christ. And so everyone is invited to receive a star that has a word on it and see how that word might point you toward Christ in the coming year. And so everyone gets a star word today, and we invite you to do that by driving up about 15 minutes after worship ends this morning. We're going to invite you to come and, and drive through the parking lot. It's been cleared enough for you to receive a star word. It also is our monthly food drive. And this, this morning, our food collection will go to the Hub Argentine, and they are asking for cans of protein beans. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Have your cans of protein beans ready to go in your trunk or in your back seat, and one of us will come and get that out for you, and then someone else will hand you a star word. We don't want you to get out of the car this morning. We want you to stay safe and warm, and we want you to be able to find that light that will point you to Christ this year. So we invite you to do that 15 minutes after, and if you can't make it to church, it, when, uh, not just the Hub Argentine, I apologize. It also is for and any food is welcome this morning. I take that back. You bring whatever food you want. You have a pot roast, you bring it on up. We're going to find a place for it. You bring any food you want this morning. I also want you to be sure that if you aren't will, uh, able to make it to church this morning after worship, we will have a Zoom opportunity. Pam Draper, our Connections uh, Ministry Coordinator, will host a Coffee and Reflections after worship, and you can log on to that. She'll drop that link into the comments sometime during worship this morning, and she will draw a word for you this morning so that you can stay home if that feels safer to you. 
however it is that you're gathering and worshiping with us this morning, we're grateful that you're here, and we're grateful that we get to worship together. Join us in our opening hymn, In the Bleak Midwinter. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan, I stood hard as on water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago, our God have cannot hold. Stain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, angels and archangels may have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim throng the air, but his mother only in her maiden bliss worships the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him for as I am? If I were a Bring a laugh. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can I give him? Give my heart. Pray together. Gracious and loving God, that is what we long to do. We long to give Christ our hearts. We long on this first Sunday of a new year to, to look ahead in anticipation of possibilities and promises. And even so, we are reflective and look back on, on the year that has been, and, and we're aware of wounds and hurts and disappointments and joy and unexpected blessings. And God, even though we're not sure about what lies ahead this year, we are sure of one thing. When we look back on the year that has been, we can see your presence with us. And so we pray, as we look ahead, we know you will lead us, and we will find the light that will lead us to Christ. And so it is in his name.
softly sleeping, sent from heaven, shining light against the cold. And waken my soul. Word of God, born in darkness, gift of wisdom from afar. Refresh me, open my heart, bring me out of darkness and open my heart, and may your light burn in me. May your love endless be, may you be always with me. Child of God, sleeping Savior, as you my world awaits, needing forgiveness, needing your kindness. Now you have found me. Waken my soul. of darkness and waken my Our scripture today comes from Matthew's gospel. So moving out of Luke a little bit over to Matthew, Matthew's gospel, chapter two, verses one through 12, the story of the wise men, the Magi. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. 
On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our rock, our strength, our redeemer, our light. Amen. So it's been a couple weeks now since we at my house said yes. If you read the newsletter, you'll know that a couple weeks ago we said yes to dog sitting our neighbor's dog, Bella, for a couple weeks at Christmas. Our neighbors were heading to see their, their dying father and grandfather in Mexico for a couple of weeks. And when our neighbor came to the door with her mask and, and her minimal English and my even more minimal Spanish, I was pretty sure I understood at least her desperation in asking. You know, we don't know them well, and in fact, we're still kind of wondering whether they were super accepting of us. But she was standing there on our porch asking me if, if we could watch their dog for two weeks. And in that conversation, I learned that the dog was pregnant. And it was sort of a mystery who the father might be. But, but she, she assured us there, there would be no puppies while they were gone. So, so when Carter got home, I sent, I sent her over, um, whose Spanish is improving, you know, by the day, over to talk about the details a little more. And it turns out two weeks of watching Bella was probably going to be three. But again, they hope, you know, she, she won't have her puppies while we're gone. And, and Carter and I talked about it a lot. It made us laugh in our conversation, I think partly because it was so bizarre. Like, new neighbors don't ask each other to watch their dog for three weeks, who's pregnant, right, over Christmas. It's like, it's a little invasive. We, we'd never even been around a pregnant dog before. And we did some Googling of pregnant dogs and, and realized, um, you know, the, the gestation time for a dog is only like 58 to 68 days and, and they realized the month before that she was pregnant so we had sort of a feeling that if we said yes there was like a decent sized chance that puppies could happen toward toward the end of Bella's stay with us but there was something that kept nudging us to say yes like nudging us forward to say yes to this weird ask part of it part of it was that there was this reconciliation aspect with our neighbors our neighbors affirming us and letting us know that they think we're all right after all. Part of it was the fact that everything about our normal holiday was different this year, and we could say yes. And that felt significant. Never would we normally have the freedom to dog sit for three weeks at Christmas. We'd normally be traveling across the country and all over Kansas to be with family. And this year we could say yes. And, and we've committed to being good neighbors. Um, it's, part, it's part of what we feel God has called us to. And so we decided to say yes. And it was unclear which day they were leaving. And we still don't know for sure when they're going to get back. But we decided to say yes. And Bella was the sweetest. She likes to snuggle and play with our dog, Ollie. She loved being upstairs and sitting under the Christmas tree. It was an easy start to our time and a confirmation that, that we made the right decision. We were still a little bit on edge because, because Bella was really, really pregnant. But even with that risk, it felt like we were, we were leaning in to doing the right thing for our neighbors in the moment. So, so fast forward to a few days into our time with Bella. It was Christmas Eve, and we found ourselves Googling all of the ways she was acting weird. And I'm not sure if it was because we didn't want to believe it or what, but I found myself reading like article after article of how do I know if my dog is in labor and, and not saying anything out loud to Carter. 
Like maybe I thought I would read something that said, oh, you know, that's just a myth or be proven wrong or something. But finally I said, okay, you know, Bella is like four out of five things on this article. I think she's going to have her puppies. And Carter asked what the fifth thing was. And I told her, I will sp spare you the details, but Carter says that explains what I just saw on the floor downstairs. And by then... It was about time for Christmas Eve worship to begin. <laughs> and Bella had a kiddie pool and blankets that they gave us for her bed downstairs. And I, I now know, you know, a kiddie pool makes a good whelping box. I also now know what whelping means. But we, we have pre-recorded worship for Christmas Eve this year to give staff a chance to be home with their families um, that night since this year is so weird. So, so Carter and I were just upstairs and, and we had a million candles lit and had a chalice and a plate for communion and our own, you know, Advent wreath going and we sang and listened to music. And I really, I like tried to convince Carter to let Bella come upstairs for the 7 p.m. service because she was lonely down there and probably needed to have communion with us because the table is open to all. But, but Carter rightfully said, you know, like Bella might be distracting. And so, so we, like you, worshiped in that sacred 2020 Christmas way and sang Silent Night and we passed our light. And as Charles finished playing the postlude, we, we chatted a bit about how beautiful worship was and how we can't wait for next year and how it was both hard and good. And then we realized Bella wasn't whining at the bottom of the stairs. And, and we looked at each other and Carter said, I'm gonna go outside and see if she had her puppy. So Carter went outside and squatted down to look through the basement window where Bella's bed was in that bathroom. And I was inside blowing out candles and finishing off the communion cup. And all of a sudden, Carter bangs on the window and scared me half to death and says, there is a puppy. There's a puppy. And it was like every ounce of nervousness and apprehension we had about the whole dog sitting advent adventure. It was still there, but it was also paired with this overwhelming, ridiculous joy. I don't even know quite how to explain what we were feeling, but I can tell you that there was human squealing and laughter, and I think we might have even hugged, and there, were, there was like gleeful texting pictures to friends and family uh, of this little bitty puppy that was right there in our basement, and this repeated for like every 20 minutes for a good while until we decided to try and see, you know, if she would let us downstairs, and she did, and y'all... On Christmas Eve night, I watched birth happen in, uh, you know, from an, a questionably impregnated female who had to stay away from home. It was like the nativity scene happened right there in my basement. I was amazed <laughs> and freaking out and Googling about dog and puppy safety and getting teary, happy tears. And it was like somehow all of the difficulty of 2020 and all of the difficulty of navigating Christmas plans in COVID and all of the difficulty of not having Christmas Eve worship in person with all of you was met that night with the most unexpected, ridiculous good news. I was incredibly aware of all that hard you know, we've been slogging through the pandemic, sometimes thriving, but just totally persevering for, for so long. And it's, it's like the haze of our daily lives was just so regular and known. And then there were puppies I didn't even know were about to exist across the street. And they came and happened in my basement. If you would have told me a month ago, we'd have 10 dogs in our home right now, I would have laughed you out of the room. But it's just been wonderful. Everyone is doing great. Thanks to some of you, we have the resources and supplies and expertise and encouragement that we need. And we've just been able to snuggle eight adorable puppies this last week. They're going to go ahead and put a picture up for all of you to see. And of course, they all have names. They're all Christmas themed. And I won't share all of them with you. But I will tell you that we named the first one born Jesus. That's right. Jesus was born in my basement on Christmas Eve night. And let me tell you, she is a real cutie. <laughs> 
I'm glad we said yes when it didn't make sense logically. I'm glad we sort of charged through even though we knew she might have puppies and and if we would have known that our basement bathroom would be a puppy pile of cuteness, even if we knew they'd be cute and adorable, I think we might have said no if we would have had a little more, you know, um, ability to process that request. Because Bella could have had problems in birth or, or one of the puppies could have died or she could have gotten really protective because we just met her. Um, but all those fears weren't the emotions leading the way. There was just this deep sense of peace that came with saying yes, that pulled us toward doing what we felt like was the right thing, the generous thing we could do for our neighbors. And seeing that risk through is a pretty humbling thing, though. And if not humbling, extra vulnerable, right? It showed us how much we do not know how much Google does know, too, by the way. But it also caused us to accept that, that things might not go well, to assume some risk, right? And we experience the best re reward. <laughs> like, who doesn't love puppies? Seeing the risk through and saying yes to a radical experience happens to be in line with the story of the Magi we read today. It isn't so much centered on the birth of Jesus on Christmas Eve, neither Jesus the God nor Jesus the dog. This the story of the Magi most likely takes place a little bit later, maybe even a couple years later. But I love that, that we add these characters to our nativity scenes and share their story in our Christmas pageants because they add a layer to the story of the birth of Jesus that makes it a little more radical, a little more humble, and one more example of, of what transformation happens upon the encounter of Christ. When we celebrate Epiphany, this holiday after Christmas, when we share that Christ revealed himself to all people, light in the darkness, we most often are celebrating the story of, of the wise men and watching it play out. After Jesus was born, the Magi came to Jerusalem and asked Herod where the king of the Jews was because they had seen a star in the sky. And you need to know that scripture had long paired the star with the Messiah that the Jewish people were waiting for. Numbers 24, 17 says, A star shall come forth out of Jacob. And, and went on to explain how it would liberate the people. The, the Dead Sea Scrolls connect a star with Messianic prophecy. There was a second century leader of Jewish revolt who was nicknamed the son of the star because one rabbi deemed him Messiah. The Magi saw the star and came to find the king of the Jews so they could pay him homage. And it, it, it's a peculiar thing, right? There is no reason for the Magi from the East to have made this trip. Jesus was not their king. They didn't grow up waiting for this star. If you would have told them a few years earlier that they would be going to visit first an egotistical, fearful tyrant of a leader to make their way to see a Jewish infant, I don't think they probably would have believed you. But it's what happened. Herod freaked out at them because uh, a king was a direct threat to his power. He was the king of the Jews in accordance with his power, but not his religious authority. His lineage didn't fit the bill it never was going to. He was not in line for the messianic prophecy. And he often reacted with force out of his fear. In this story, it was no different. These magi came and asked him where the real king of the Jews was so they could pay him homage. And Herod did everything he could to destroy that plan, trying to trick the magi into helping him find Jesus. He asked them to go, but then to return and tell them where Jesus was so that he could, you know, pay his respects to Jesus too. And, and by, you know, doing that, we learn it really meant murder every child to and under every boy um, because death seemed like the only thing he had in his pocket to fight such life. That was Herod. 
And I can't stress enough that there, there had to have been some clear indicators that Herod was not okay right then, right? I don't think he was, he was smooth enough with his power-hungry demeanor and distress to fool anybody. The Magi knew Herod was dangerous, that they had just walked into something a lot different than a king and a star and a chance to offer gifts. It would have made sense even right then for them just to go home back to the east, wherever it is they came from, they didn't have to say yes to this risk of moving forward. It was a bigger journey than they'd originally planned. It was it was sort of ridiculous, not their thing. They didn't have to keep going, but they did. There was something pulling them toward the goodness, toward that yonder star. Perhaps it was the pull of light and the darkness, Perhaps it was the way goodness so clearly revealed itself in contrast to the darkness of Herod. Maybe the Magi went forward with it because the Spirit led them forward, even if it wasn't the Spirit that they would give that credit to. Maybe there was something enticing in the humility of submitting to a king that was new, and something felt good in that kindness. But what we find is that in their willingness to say yes, to the journey to see Jesus, they are met with something more radiant and more worth it than they ever could have imagined. When they set out to go see Jesus, there the star appeared again. And, and remember the star and the sign of the Messiah, they're together. So, so we see a clear sign of the Messiah. And so so this star, what Matthew is describing, is probably this like supernatural event, right? It doesn't make sense logically, um, but but it's it's where Jesus wants to be found by the Magi. That's what this story is telling. And the more peculiar the story um, becomes with this star, the more it illumines a way forward that helps us recognize something bigger is happening here. The Magi. Aren't, aren't feeling neutral in this space. They have made a decision to find Jesus, to follow the light, to leave Herod's oppressive darkness behind. And when they see the star atop, um, you know, above the home of, of Jesus, Matthew says that the, the magi, the wise men, were overwhelmed with joy. They were overwhelmed with joy just seeing the star in its place. And I don't, I don't know about you, but it really doesn't make sense that the Magi would find themselves overwhelmed with joy. Like, did they like stars that much? They had no background here. They were, they were excited about the star, and somehow in the midst of it all, in response to their yes, they had found what they didn't even know they were really looking for. Inside was baby Jesus, not an adult, a baby, and they knelt down, and they paid him homage, showing special honor respect. They they humbled themselves in this place and they just let their joy take over. A cute baby. A light in the darkness. It isn't puppies in the basement, but I would guess the human baby Jesus God was also cute, right? Somehow that was the thing that made them realize liberation could exist and be true overwhelming joy. They gave him gifts, expensive ones, treasured ones, because they wanted to give of themselves, to offer what they had to him. Those also didn't make sense, but were somehow right and good. It was a courageous moment for the wise men. And sometimes courage looks like the willingness to let the darkness around you be transformed. They were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. They knew he was a disaster waiting to happen. And then they went home another way. Their yes in going to find Jesus was beautiful. And so was God's determination to be found. I mean, magi from the east were not as exactly as convenient as shepherds in the field outside of town. This, this act, this journey and action and humility and respect, it was just so clearly, this, this act of, of freeing them forward, 
that light led to liberation instead of playing a part in continued status quo they went home another way and took a risk to be an enemy of Herod too they assumed risk to themselves isn't that what saying yes to the light is like a threat to what is dark a counter to the fear a substitute for the din of normalcy. Jesus, the, the light of the world, pulls us in, wants to be found, and helps us say yes to the kind of trans transformative experiences that lead us to freedom, that lead us to feel overwhelming joy. In Luke, back to Luke, uh, chapter 1, 78 and 79, it says, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Magi's story is just confirming and affirming reflection on, on just how far God will go to reel us in, even in the shadow of the death, even in the darkness, to pull us towards safety, the safety of ourselves, and, and to, to, to this intentional decision-making to help others. The light, whether the star was a converging of stars like happened a, a few weeks ago, you know, or, or a supernatural occurrence, it was a big, undeniable light, the kind we can't help but pay attention to. And that kind of light transforms. It's a simple story of the Magi choosing to do the right thing to honor a king, to humble themselves as risky as it was to pay their respects and to return a different way because that encounter still had them smiling and nothing about their encounter with Herod produced that sort of lasting joy. So their choice to do the right thing sent them forward a new way. I think that's a story that we can all find ourselves in. And I think that's part of the point. Jesus is revealed even to the Gentiles, even the ones from another place. And this revelation still shines on each of us. The radiant majesty of God's mercy and grace will also minister to our greatest needs, will also make us believe in true liberation for all people. Because Jesus came to dispel gloom and to heal our wounds. Jesus wants to be found so that all might exchange nagging guilt for the quiet assurance of forgiveness. Jesus came to restore all, all that we've lost. Epiphany is a season of liberation and freedom amidst unrest and restlessness. So that leads us, that leads us into this whole star, war, star words thing we do. For those of you who are new or, or weren't quite logged on by the time we were doing announcements, Star Words is this sort of ridiculous practice, spiritual practice, we have done to set our intention for the year. We receive a word that will point us toward Jesus for the year to come. It isn't biblical <laughs> to pick a word, but it's different and surprising. And I hope that, that if star words aren't your thing, that you at least make a choice to open your hearts to a willingness to be pulled toward the light of Christ in the year to come. Where do you need to say yes? Where it might be easier to say no? Are you, are you hearing judgment around you? Or the grace that could only come from the child born in Bethlehem? If you're a bit skeptical, hear how the light has shown up in other St. Paul's folks this past year through this ridiculous thing called Star Words. Leela's word action offered her a, a deep calling to put her faith into action through service and generosity. Pam's word determined made her realize when her de determination failed, God's did not. Nancy's word awareness helped her be aware of others who have, have needed help during this difficult year. 
Lois said, my star word, undaunted, demands that I don't give up, that I remain strong and not be discouraged in the face of a global pandemic, an alarming political situation, racial injustice, and many other problems in our society, even as I feel totally powerless to affect the changes needed. Will I see peace in my lifetime? The word undaunted tells me that isn't my concern and I should not despair, but to do whatever I can in any way that I can and leave the ultimate outcome in God's hands. Julie's star word was study. She said it was perfect for this year as she joined the Wednesday afternoon small group and learned about racial justice. Ruth's word was spunky, defined as courageous and determined, and she admitted to herself that there is courage and determination when times are so hard. Maggie didn't know what celebrate looked like in a pandemic, but found ways to celebrate earth waking up and flowers blooming in the spring, offering the promise of renewal and rebirth but also celebrated how people came up with creative and innovative solutions to the challenges we face. She celebrated the compassion folks had toward their communities, the people printing 3D face shields or mask holders, the the people sewing masks, individuals and companies donating supplies, all of the zoos and museums sharing videos that help folks learn while at home. Celebration. Scott's word was beauty, and it changed the way he sees the world around him. Luke's word was newness, and he had a year of it. Pastor Sandra's word was faithfulness, and it opened her eyes to not only her own faithfulness, but God's faithfulness in her life and in the lives of others. My word was fearless, and I feel like it guided me throughout the year to continue to name what I was afraid of and to let God's comforting, do not be afraid, assure me that we're going to make it through. I learned that being fearless is hard, and it's also liberating. Those are just some of the stories from the last year we've had of using star words as a spiritual discipline and intention for the year. Of course, I know some of your star words probably didn't stick, and that's okay. My hope for us this year is that we all feel the Spirit's nudge to say yes to whatever it is that is pulling us forward to do the right thing. Maybe Jesus won't be born in your basement in the form of puppies, but he might be born in your heart in the form of wonder, intention, generosity, and overwhelming joy. (laughs) Happy New Year, St. Paul's. Let there be light. May it be so in the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Amen. So we have a chance to respond to God's word. Where is the light pulling you today? I would invite you during this time to pray, to light a candle, to pray your your way forward. Maybe to share in the comments about your own Star Word experience, what, what light um, was revealed to you this year through your word. Maybe spend time praying about what God will do with you in the year to come. This is also a time we respond to the word with generosity. There is one thing I think that gives overwhelming joy in my life, and that's the ability to share with others. So whether that looks like cans of food, um, to to share with our neighbors here in Johnson County and our neighbors in Wyandotte County, or whether that looks like setting your intention with your giving for the year to come, or or whether it looks like a prayer, um, like the the song earlier in the bleak midwinter, what can I give? Um, Give God your heart. So let us go to God in prayer and in generosity. Sleeping in a manger under starless skies. See the newborn king trading every glory for a silent night. Here is the promise. We 
Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, above ye heavenly host. Praise God, the Son and Holy Ghost. No. St. Paul's, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion together. If you don't have elements in front of you, run to the kitchen and grab what you have. God's grace uh, will make it through, so grab crackers, juice, get what you have. God will make it what we need. Um, I want you to know that all are invited to the table. We have an open table, meaning all who desire God's grace uh, and wish, wish to share it with others are welcome here. That means everyone. So um, know that there is a place for you here at the table, um, that there's a place for, for Jesus in your heart. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, O oh God, 
for making your love evident since the very beginning of time, when you spoke the word which replaced the darkness of chaos with life-giving light, a light which has nurtured generations of people and plants and creatures, great and small, a light which also revealed the fear and powerlessness caused by corrupt and evil actions. And so you spoke the word which would once and for all dispel the darkness of chaotic lives through your love for the world. The word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. The angels caroled glory to you in the highest heavens and peace to all people on earth. And we join them and with all people to praise your holy name. Holy Lord God of endless love, heaven and earth are surely full of your glory. The angel sang of it. We have been lavished with it. Blessed is the one who was born that we might have life. Glory to God and on earth peace to all people. Holy God, as the travelers with their treasures were overwhelmed with joy on finding Jesus, so we also are overwhelmed on finding out the depth of your love for us. For Jesus showed, uh, showed just how beloved we are to him by loving us and giving himself for us. On that night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks for it and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat it and remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave it to his friends. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from it. Remember me. Send the power of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, O God, that we may experience the presence of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Breathe your Spirit in us that we may be one body with him, living out his ministry in the world today and every day. This we pray in Jesus' name, and we join our prayers together with the confidence of children as we pray the prayer he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of life poured out for you. May we taste God's grace may we feel the overwhelming joy of a marvelous light. Three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse and far, field and mountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again, king forever, ceasing never over us all to. Sing. 
Give us about 15 minutes because we have to bundle up and get outside and all of that. So starting, I'm going to say 11.15 to 12.30. 11.15 to 12.30, you can drive through here at St. Paul's and receive your star. Um, stay in your car, and, and, and you can also bring food uh, for our monthly uh, serve donation items for the hub and for... Um, our Johnson County neighbors, and so protein beans for the hub, any non-perishable, not pot roast, Pastor Sandra, <laughs> non-perishable item um, you can drop off. Uh, please stay in your car. We'll get those items out, and, and we'll hand you your star. If you are not able to come, we have a Zoom opportunity right after worship. Check the comments. Pam Draper is in charge of that. If if you have trouble getting that Zoom link, email Pam at stpaulslenexa.org right now, and she will help you get connected. Pam at stpaulslenexa.org. That's another way that you can get your star. If, um, so on Zoom right now. Um, after that, uh, you can email the office, email one of the pastors. We'll get you a star. We want to make sure that that happens. But we hope to see a lot of you um, just in, in a bit. So here are the stars. I want to pray over them. So let us pray together. God, your light is the light of the world. Help these words and these intentions guide us forward in the year to come. Whatever comes our way, <laughs> 2020 showed us that a lot might come our way this year. Whatever comes our way, may you be the light in our darkness. May our intentions always choose to do good. May we leave the darkness behind and head into the light. May you be revealed at every corner. Bless these stars. Bless the folks who are about to receive them. Bless our neighbors who will receive the food that we're about to give that we might continue to glorify you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace, St. Paul's, and serve the Lord. See you in a bit. I am not who I once was Defined by all the things I've done Afraid my shame would be exposed Afraid of really being known But then you gave my heart a home So I walked out of the darkness and into the light From fear of shame into the hope of life 
mercy called my name and made a way to fly out of the darkness and in to the light. With years of keeping secrets safe, wondering if I could change. can turn into a stone, and that's not the way I want to go, so I walked out of the darkness and into the light, the fear of shame into the hope of life, mercy called my name and made a way to fly out of the darkness and into the light. There's no place I'd rather be. Your light is marvelous. Your light is marvelous. You have come to set us free. You are marvelous. Your light is marvelous to me. So I walked out of the darkness and into the light from fear of shame into the hope of life. Mercy called my name and made a way to fly out of the darkness and into the light.